On the second night of a back-to-back and on the last game of the road trip, the Toronto Raptors simply run out of gas against the Boston Celtics. 120-106 is the final. The Raptors record drops to 12-14 and on the season. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Sherman Hamilton, Paul Jones, and Jack Armstrong. Tough one, guys. Uh, I'll start with you, Sherm. You know, how did you assess the team tonight? They looked a bit tired. They looked a lot tired. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. I mean, this was a tough situation for a game to be changed on the Raptors. Uh, you know, Boston's a difficult team, and, and the Raptors, you could just see them mentally fatigued in this game, trying to physically demand their, their games to do things that just wasn't there. Now, you're not taking anything away from Boston. They got hot from the three-point line, and they made the Raptors pay in terms of the three-point dis- disparity, but there's no question. And the Raptors won't use it as an excuse, but us sitting here talking about it, you can't deny that that team looked tired in this game. Jonesy, how did you feel? Same thing. Um, you know, Jack and I talked about it on the radio. There was a stretch where Toronto did a great job of holding Boston down. Uh, they missed three or four layups on, you know, like three trips up the court. Pascal missed layups. Norm looked a little out of control on one. And those are, those are fatigue plays. Um, and, and then at the other end, defensively, you know, locking down a guy like Ojale or Pritchard, who both of whom, as Sherm said, played very well. But there, isn't, there wasn't that little bit of extra energy just to kind of make those guys pay. So, look – it was a it was a it was a tough loss tonight. You could see it. You could call it a schedule loss because of what Sherm said, the way it uh, was changed and the way it was moved on them. But I'm seeing this team improve, and I think if you're a Raptor fan, you have to be encouraged with what you saw over the course of the road trip. Jack, your thoughts on on the game tonight? Just uh, I like I like where they're going. I really do. I like where they're going. I'm not the least bit discouraged about tonight. Give the Celtics credit. That's the first time in Celtic history. We're talking to Boston Celtics here. You had Ojale and, uh, you know, Pritchard combined for 12 threes. Two guys making six in the same game. It's never happened in the historic, uh, you know, uh, incredible resume of the Boston Celtics. So we saw something amazing tonight. And give the Celtics credit. They deserved it. Um, to me, I think we're really heading into something. I was chatting with Jonesy about this when we were on the radio. And here's the, the topic now. The good thing is we have two days to breathe and we don't, and the Raptors don't play until Sunday and they're going to get a few days of warm sunshine. But here's the two things. Number one, you hope to have Adenobi and Watanabe back on Sunday. So the question is now, and it's always a dicey one, who's your best five versus your five best, right? Number one. And to me, I'm looking at it saying Norm Powell's been great as a starter. Where does Adenobi now fit with this new group? And I think uh, Baines has been inconsistent and many times ineffective. Uh, So what do you do there? And then the other thing is, uh, if you're going to have your best five and your five best playing in the starting unit, Boucher's giving you a lot of punch and he's been excellent off the bench. Someone else has to emerge as someone who can give you a little bit more juice off the bench. Terrence Davis, I would put Terrence Davis as Baines as the two guys that have disappointed me. And I think if you're going to reconfigure your group, you still need to have a little pop off the bench from a wing player. So is that Davis or is there going to be a committee of Johnson, uh, Bembry and Watanabe? I I think those are some topics that to me, I'm curious about leading up to Sunday. So then Sherm, what do you do in that situation? If you're the Raptors, if you're the Raptors coaching staff, like how do you balance, you know, you obviously, you got one of the best defenders in the league coming back. And then you've got Norm, who's been on a tear offensively. You know, that, these are tough decisions, as Jack mentioned. What do you do? Well, they're called positive problems to have talented <laughs> guys who you can obviously move in and out of the starting lineup. I think a couple of things come to mind. Number one is OG's going to come back. He, he's going to have to need some time to acclimate himself and kind of get his game rhythm back. So that's something that Nick Nurse is going to have to take in, into consideration. The other thing is when you look at the units themselves, you know, disruption is a factor as well. And, and when you talk about a guy like Pascal Siakam, if you're going to go with a small starting unit and play, say, Powell and OG in that starting lineup, Pascal's going to be forced to defend that five spot. 
that could take something out of his rhythm. The other side of it is if you bring OG off the bench, you're going to have to take minutes from somebody off that bench, and you don't want to take it from a guy like Bembry because he's been doing a solid job off the bench. So the moving parts that have to be considered are big. But to me, at the end of the day, the least disruption is most important. And right now, the way I see Norm Powell playing and that aggression and the starts that he's getting his team off to, that's going to put a lot of thought in Nick Nurse's mind about keeping him in that starting lineup. However he manufactures that, it's got to be a consideration right now with the starts that this team has had with him there. Jonesy, your turn to play coach with uh, with this positive. Problem. Well, and and I listened to both of the both of these guys, Sherm and and Jack, that you know that point those things out. And the other thing I would say is Nick Nurse has matchups working in his favor. You look at who the other team is going to roll out there, and depending on who it is, uh, is is there a, you know, if as long if you have a, if there's a Joel Embiid, then you're going to have to find a way to start Baines. If there's, you know, if there's a, you know, a, a guy like DeAndre Jordan, you're going to have to find a way to start Baines. But if they look like you do, then maybe you go with a matchup thing and maybe it's okay for Pascal to guard a guy who's, you know, as Sherm says, it takes a little bit out of him, but he's a, maybe it's a, it's a stretch five, a guy that plays kind of like Pascal does and will drift out to the perimeter. So Nick Nurse has his, has his work cut out for him. But I think the other team and matchups are also going to dictate some of that. The other part of it, too, is OG is going to come back and he might go in shorter stints because it's going to take him a while to get his legs. No matter how much you practice or you, you, you ride the bike or you work out in the gym, it's never the same as a game with the intensity, as we say, when the popcorn is going. So um, I, my feeling would be keep Norm in, go small if the lineup fits. If not then Nick Nurse is going to have to make a decision. And Norm would be the guy that I would – I know everybody may not, may not be popular, but Norm might be the guy that I would think about bringing off the bench because he's got such versatility and has played that role before. Jack, just really briefly going back to the game tonight, you know, Tatum and, and Jalen Brown combined for, what, 29 points? They come in averaging over 50, right? So essentially the game plan worked, right? You just – you know, you weren't expecting Sammy Ojale to hit six and Pritchard to hit five or six or six, whatever he hit. I mean, you got to be happy on some levels, right? Yeah. Well, they had 19 assists combined. So, you know, to credit Brown and Tatum, uh, they played like really good team players. And then as things started rolling, uh, they took what the rap the defense gave them. And uh, so, yeah, I, I thought uh, the whole key is, can you get the ball out of the hands of the, be of the other better players and we've seen that with John Morant the other night. Uh, guys, we saw it uh, last night with Bradley Beal and Westbrook. I mean, it made those, you know, they made those guys work. Uh, so to me, that's Nick's strategy, and it's worked well. And I thought it worked tonight. And give those guys credit for making a ton of threes. Uh, but to me, I, I think when it's all said and done, uh, again, I'm not discouraged. I, I, you know, I, I look at where the Raptors were the last time they played the Celtics in Tampa. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Tonight, they look like a different team with a lot of life. And I, I like what I'm seeing. I think they're heading in the right direction. They're trying to figure out what their reconfigured roster looks like. And I like what I'm seeing. More on the positive, Sherm. It felt like the plays that Siakam made were the ones that eluded him in the playoffs, especially against Boston. Did you feel like that this game was you no know, more important for him tonight? Well, I, I think every game is important for Pascal, but to your point about his performance in the bubble against Boston in the playoffs, yeah, you want to shake some of that off and some of that conversation that surrounded you based on how you played back then. But we, we saw, again, Pascal pursuing the paint in this game, being aggressive. I like the fact that they threw him on the block early on Ogilvy and went after him and, and tried to get some scores down there. And then in the second half, Pascal still continued to pursue the paint. You could see the legs go away from him a bit. He missed some easy ones, some chippy ones. But there's no question that he didn't just bail out on it and just run to the three-point line and just take shots. So that was a good sign. And then again, overall, I thought this team played as hard as they could with what they had in the tank tonight. Yeah. And that's something that you just can't fight. Fatigue is something you just can't win sometimes. And this was a game like that. But they played as hard as they could with whatever they had left in their tanks to play with tonight. Jonesy, it, it just felt like Pascal is so much more balanced in the paint right now. Like he, he's just, 
he's not forcing, he's not press, pressing, he's not rushing. His plays, his movements are just more decisive and he's more balanced. It's just, I, it's I nice. think he's got some, of, I think he's got some of his confidence back too, Randy. He's, he, he was been, he'd been over 30 and, in, in, you know, in four of six, uh, just starting to feel more comfortable working, as you said, from the inside out, uh, getting into the paint, getting to the free throw line. Not that he isn't taking threes. I mean, tonight he's two of four. And, and to Sherm's point, he was eight of 14 tonight. Could have easily been like 11 of 14. Like he missed some easy ones. But I, I just think he's reconfigured his game and made it a point to work from the inside out. I'm going to get into the paint. If the ball swings to me and I have a three or it's late in the clock, I'll take it. But that's not the primary focus of my game. And when I get it in the paint, maybe it makes those three-point shots easier for other people on my team. Well, and Jack, the great – yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I, I'd just like to make one point with Siakam. You know, sometimes you bench a guy and it goes, it goes the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And other times, you know, what's the old line? Sometimes you can see the stars, but you can't see the light. As a coaching staff, as an organization, it's about getting guys to see the light and say, hey, we need some change here. We need some growth. We need some improvement. We can't stay, uh, you know, we can't flatline here. And I think you look at where he is now. We, we've seen all those things now, which are good. So I'm really encouraged, again, by his development. I think he's dialed back in now uh, to a new formula that's going to help him succeed. So I think that's good. Well, that's a positive for sure. I appreciate you guys doing this. Um, we'll have... Another one of these Sunday night as the Raptors take on the Timberwolves, 7 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Thanks for watching. You can click to watch our last episode or to subscribe to the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode.